I'm Dumb Truck DS. Welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This tutorial is the second in a two part series, and you really need to see the first one before watching this one. So if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. I have a link down below to part one, and then come back and watch this one. This video covers how to do pipes and other advanced structures with proper texture alignment. And once again, I wanna thank Bal for his generosity and uh, spending the time on these videos. So without further ado, here's Bal. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm going to illustrate making a tube. I put some random, random texture on it. Not too important, but to illustrate, I'm going to align this brick along. Hmm, actually, this is not good. Let's just go like this. And so when I'm working on pipes, I'm going to take some time to align them right initially. Uh, make sure everything is snapped because then with a UV lock everything is going to be easier and snapped all the time. So it, it looks a bit boring and time consuming the first time but you just do it once and then you're good to go. So now we have a nice nice aligned brick texture on the surface. So I want to turn this into a pipe. So what you can do with a curved like obviously you can just rotate around and, and do this to create your pipe. But what you can also do, which I do a lot when I'm working with circular designs, is I'll use the rotate tool and I'll I'll put it at the center of my my design and I'll control D to duplicate the brush and then just rotate it and then just press control R, control R, and that duplicates that repeats the last action. This is quite useful when you're like placing small details in a more complex map and want to distribute them along along a circle. So now that I have this pipe, I can convex merge it. Everything's still aligned properly. So this is a pipe, uh, and I want to make a curve. I want to make a corner for the pipe, like between these two surfaces, for example. So you can do a convex merge. It's going to make you something really ugly. I want to show you how to do it cleanly. Again, this is using mostly techniques from CZG's tutorial. Uh, just apply it to trench broom. I'm going to use this curve, like the circle, as a as a reference for how I want the corner to be. So it's going to be following this, and I'm going to scale it to show the outer the outer edge of it. These are just guidelines, just to see what I'm doing. I'll delete them once I'm done. And again, the nice thing about aligning the textures early on is that as I extrude. Uh, the corner pipe. I'm going to keep the alignment uh, preserved because I have the texture lock on and also, most importantly, the UV lock on. I'll show you what this changes just in a bit. So I'm going to extrude. I'm going to clip from one reference circle to the other. So that's my first segment. And then I'm just going to conti continue extruding. So con extrude just for Reminder is control shift and drag out from an edge. And so here, I'm continuing extruding and then I'm gonna skew uh, this segment into place so it's aligned with the circle. To skew it's shift alt and drag and it only works in the 2D view, not in the 3D view. So I snapped it to the circle. Obviously on this side, it's not right. So then I clip. So this is basically what I'm, what I'm going to do across the whole the whole corner. And so what you can see, since I I kept the UV lock on, is that it's keeping the textures aligned aligned to the pipe. You're getting a bit of skewing because obviously you're snapped. So ideally, what you want to do is, and this can take a while, is you want to realign them as you go. I'm not not going to do this here because it's not too important. Obviously, this works better if your textures don't have any kind of horizontal detail or vertical detail in this case, just to get stuff aligned right. But you can spend some time getting it right on one corner since it's going to be used everywhere. So here, I'm doing the same thing. The idea is you want to extrude about the same length as the edge here. Because say, for, for example, if I extrude just a bit and then I skew it into place, since UV lock is on, you're going to get something really deformed. Uh, that's quite ugly. Which is why on my initial extrude, which doesn't use any kind of texture locking, 
I'll make sure that the the distance of this edge is about the same as this one. It doesn't need to be too precise, just precise enough that it looks about right. Clip. Do it again. Clip. And that's basically the work done, because then you can just Reuse this one, just resnap it. There you go. So, yeah, you get a bit of skewing. You can fix this if you want by unskewing the textures as you go. Obviously, it's a bit long on a, on a pipe with so many, so many, so many sides. Obviously, this works perfectly on the simpler example of the curve that I showed at the start of the video. So, I wanted to show some other things. So I can delete my reference circles. You can also easily do some kind of like intermediate. You can use this segment and just like extrude it out. If you want to do some different kind of pipe. All this stuff will compile fine, but obviously I recommend to turn it into fun detail, or otherwise your viz times are going to become just crazy. So yeah, that was just a few things. I guess I could show how to make some kind of pool shape. I know this this has cropped up recently on chat. This is kind of it's the same concept as I was using with the pipe, basically. So yeah, this circle is just here as a guide, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same thing as earlier. Just go out, and then since I know the center of my, I want this to be the, the end of the pool kind of shape, I'm gonna do the same thing. So extrude. Um, I just gotta see where my end is. It's over here, so snap it here. Then clip it from the center. Then do it again. The thing is, you always have to land, land the edge you want on a on a on a grid point, so you know you can skew it right, like right here. So always the same thing, just extruding out, making sure the edge is snapped to the grid, then extruding it a bit more, and then clipping. Again, this would work better with a non-brick texture, but you can still see that it's keeping a pretty good alignment. I could go in and unskew stuff as I go uh, to help it. I won't do it here, just an example. Once I have this, I can just finish like this. It's the same piece. I should have taken this one as well. Ah, uh, there you go. Got a nice hemisphere, or like quarter of a sphere, I'll try to call that. So yeah, that's how I make most of my curves in Trench Room. So if you look in detail, this stuff is like pretty, it's pretty small, so maybe it's off-grid. Actually, it's still on all, all on grid. But if you make this, this kind of shape smaller, it's going to go under the one unit grid. Uh, but that's okay, because since you're building it all uh, with clear rules and uh, in a very methodical way, uh, it means that the points are still going to be snapped together and you shouldn't be getting any issues with QBSP. At least I've, I've been doing some pretty complex stuff and it always works perfectly. I think it's important to uh, entrench room if you want to go fast, to have a priority in, in which you use the tools. As, as you can see, when to do this, I haven't actually used the the UV editing tool at all. Um, I've mostly been relying on the UV lock and the texture lock to make sure the stuff is aligned, and that that's a a big uh, time gain. And also, when you when you see me extruding these segments, I'm I'm trying to use a vertex minip as little as possible, so I'm using uh, in priority all the extrude and skew functions 
that are integrated into trench boom and vertex manip is really like a last the last tool I'll use because it's even though it's the most powerful it's also the slowest because you're just moving points little by little so it's important to, uh, there are always many different ways to do one thing in trench boom but some ways are faster than others it's not a big deal if you if you do it slowly but it's it's nice to find techniques to go fast that's it for this two-part series I want to thank Bal again for his generosity and uh, thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next video. Oh, I almost forgot. You can find me on the Quake Mapping Discord or at Funk Message Board. I have links for those down below.